Make a date with Reverend Dr. Ebenezer Markway at 6 a.m. from Monday to Saturday on Graphic Online via Facebook and YouTube as he expounds on matters of faith. Graphic Online, truth and accuracy every day. Hello, this is Reverend Dr. Benizer Marquis of Living Streams International, bringing you Matters of Faith with Graphic Online. And um, like I said, I've been capturing the, the, all the story of, uh, of Easter, I mean the events of Easter, but I've been trying to capture them in a kaleidoscope of, of principles, different, different principles from different angles. And uh, uh, that's, that's what life is, that's in, in an applicative truth, an applicative effort, you know, to to, to bring some truth that you can take and work with. I'd like to capture this morning's thought with um, the keys of death. Now, you remember in the, in the, in the Bible, when Jesus had, well, you know, had finished prayer and everything, and then Judas came with a host of, of, of people, I mean, soldiers and all those things, they came with swords and cudgels and mattocks or whatever it is, uh, instruments of mass destruction or instruments of destruction, instru murderous instruments, and they brought it to the to, to Jesus. And the Bible said, I mean, Pe Peter, you know, rushed to defend him, but you know, and then the Bible says when when Judas came, he had told the people, the one who I walk to and I kiss, I plant a kiss, that is the person that you need to arrest. And now, you know, knowing this, the Bible says, and when he came and he kissed Jesus, you know, Jesus said, oh, um, from whence cometh thou, friend? Where are you coming from? My friend, my very good friend. He said, where are you coming from? My friend. Now, wait a minute. Jesus, after the kiss, called Judas a friend. Oh boy, not me. I mean, th that kiss is going to end my life. That kiss is going to die. Whatever I do, I'm going to die. I will pick a sword and drive it through your fifth rib and then all of us will go and answer in heaven or hell. I mean, that's what I will do because that was, that was the kiss that terminates my life. That was the kiss that was going to end everything. That was the kiss of destruction. It is a kiss of death. It is a kiss of death. But guess what? After the kiss, then Jesus calls him friend. I will never call anybody who is going to kill me or who is killing me, friend. You are not a friend. You are an enemy. You are a foe or wh whatever we say. You, you are whatever. I mean, boy, you are arch enemy. You are devil. You are evil. You are sinful. You are devil. That's what I will say. But Jesus called Judas friend. And I'm wondering, wow. Why would you do that? Then this thought just struck me. Do you know something? Judas is a friend to the purposes of God for Jesus. It was a plan of God that Jesus must come and die and pay the price. It was the purpose of God that he needs to, to pay the price on the cross for us. The, it was a plan of God that he needs to take upon himself our shame and bear our iniquities. It was God's plan. Jesus has spoken about it several times already. But here's the thing. The person who came to push him towards that purpose was the fulfillment of that purpose was Judas. So you might call Judas an enemy, you might call Judas all sorts of names, but Jesus called him friend. Why? Because Judas is a friend to the purposes of God for his life. You know, when the brothers of Joseph sold him as a, a slave to Egypt, they were friends to his purpose because his divine purpose was to land in Egypt. When, when they, when they threw Daniel into the lion's den. All those who, uh, I mean, uh, conspired against Daniel and they threw him into the lion's den, they were just going to promote him. So sometimes there are some things that people will do to you that may hurt you or that may this thing. Can I be honest with you? They're pushing you towards divine destiny. They're pushing you towards purpose. What they're doing is they're providing a platform, their evil intent, their actions, their activity, their nefarious activity and everything that they did, that, that uh, uh, act of calumny and all the things that they did, uh, the purpose was to drive you towards where God wants you to be. By the time Joseph's brothers saw him, the next time they saw him, he was where God wanted him to be. And Jesus had to fulfill it so that he can sit on 
his, the right hand of his father. Like David said, the Lord said unto my Lord, sit on my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. So you know what? Sometimes the Judases in our lives are not really enemies of our destiny, but they are friends to our destiny. There is a bitter pill to swallow. And what they meant for evil, God is turning it around. I believe with all my heart that as I speak, God is turning somebody's evil platform he laid before you. God is turning it into a, a, a platform of promotion. It was not to death. It was not to die. That was not the end of your story. It was now the beginning of your ascension to where God wants you to, the pinnacle where God wants you to be. You know what? Let the Judas come. They think they are doing us harm. Let the Judas come. They think they've betrayed us. Let the Judas come. They think they've destroyed us. No, no, and no, and no. Rather, what they did was push you towards the pinnacle of your, of your success story. And I just came to announce to you that, listen, it is not the keys of death. It is rather the keys of life for your purpose. Well, it's still a choice on how you want to look at it. You can look at it through dark eyeglasses of bitterness and pain and, and all the things. But no, you can look at it and say, see where I am now. See what God did. It's a choice you have to make. It's not a kiss of death. It's a kiss of promotion. See you later.